And the final talk of this session is on cube attack like cryptanalysis of round reduced ketchup using mixed integer linear programming. And it will be given by Song Ling and Gu Jian. Thanks for the introduction. In this talk, we apply MIOP for searching parameters for Cuba attack like a cryptanalysis of round reduced kit ketchup. K-check is the most famous permutation-based primitive designed by Bertoni et al. It was selected as the SHA-3 standard. The underlying permutation used in K-check is K-check P. K-check can be used under some key modes, like K-mic and K-check mic. It also have some relatives, including authenticated encryption k yak k -J, pseudo-random function cravat. For these kid kachak constructions, key recovery attacks are of great interest. For these kid constructions, the Cuba attack is a useful approach for the key recovery. There are two types of Cuba attacks. One is Cuba attack like a cryptanalysis. The other is Conditional cube attacks. The mixed indigenous programming models improved the conditional cube attacks greatly, as shown in the works of Lee et al. and Son et al. So a natural question arises. How about the cube attack like a cryptanalysis using MIOP? This question motivates our research. We propose an MIOP MIOP model for cube attack like cryptanalysis and apply this model to three key constructions and obtain the following results. Introduction to the Kachak P. Kachak P has an internal state of BBs, which can be seen as a um, five times five array of lanes. It iterates a round function nr times. B and nr are two parameters for k check p. Its round function has five steps, theta, rho, pi, chi, and uda. Chi applies an S-box on each row, and pi and rho just change the position of state base. The mathematical expression of the round function is listed here. And more clearly, the theta step has two columns to the state bit. So its output bit depends on 11 input bits. And if all the columns have even parity, the state will remain the same after theta step. In this case, we say the state is in the column parity kernel. The properties of the so-called CP kernel is widely used in attacks against the Kitchak. Row step uh, rotates the bees within lanes, and pi step shuffles the lanes. The algebraic degree of the nonlinear layer is two, and we can see that the nonlinear terms come from the product of two JSON bits in a row. We will utilize this property in our attacks. Zudu, we can regard it as a sister of Kachaka P. It has an internal state of 384 bits, can be arranged as a four times three array of uh, words. The round function is different from that of k check p. However, the theta and the chi are still similar. Chi applies an s box um, now is on the column. And uh, the row west and the row east change the base within a lane. Also, the mathematical expressions for the Zudu round function. And Kachak is designed by instantiating the 
Underlying permutation of sponge with Kachak P, the sponge construction is shown in this figure, and uh, the Kachak itself takes in a message and output a digest. However, when it takes the concatenation of a key and the message as input, it becomes a mic, which is called the Kachak mic. <coughs> The combination of Kachak P and the monkey duplex results in the authenticated encryption KJ. The Kachak P star here is obtained by applying the pi inverse and the pi just before and after Kachak P. You can see from the duplex uh, construction, the first output here, they here is returned after n start round f0 and n step round f1. So that is to say n star is 12 rounds and step is one round. So the first uh, output is returned after 13 rounds. We target on KJ versions with this number reduced. Although KJ has four variants. We target two smaller ones with internal state size 200 and 400 bits. Zudu can be an alternative permutation in the duplex. We call it Zudu in the KJ mode. In Cuba text, the output bit can be regarded as a Boolean polynomial. Um, secret variables K and public variables V given a monomial TI, which is a product of the public variables specified by set I, then the Boolean polynomial can be written as two parts. The first part contains terms that are divisible by the monomial. And the second part contains terms that are not divisible by the TI. The D public variables here are called cube variables, and D is the dimension. And the factor here, PSI, is called the super poly of F. Where all the cube variables take all possible values, the sum of the polynomial will be exactly the super poly. In cube attacks, the tiger exploit near superpoly to recover the key. In the original cube attack, the PSI, the superpoly, is regarded as a linear expression in all the keybits, while in the cube attack like cryptanalysis, the tiger uses NA auxiliary variables so, so that the superpoly depends on a smaller set of kibis, let's say an i kibis. Once a cube with parameters uh, an a, an i, and d is formed, the attack proceeds in two phases. In the online phase, the attack builds a lookup table which stores the cube sums corresponding to all possible n i kibis. This phase takes a time complexity of two to the ni plus d and a memory complexity two to the ni. In the online phase, the attacker gets the value of the na auxiliary variables and then query the cipher to obtain the cube sum. With the cube sum, he looks up the table. A right guess of the na auxiliary variables will lead to a hit in this table. In this way, the attacker can find, recover the an I key base. The online phase takes a time complexity of two to the N A plus D. In this procedure, we can see that a good attack should have balanced parameters for an A and an, an I and an A. Record that 
the rounder function of KCHEC has the algebraic degree two, and the nonlinear terms comes from the product of adjacent base. So if we avoid the adjacent cube variables, the first round will be linearized. So after n round, the algebraic degree will be two to the m minus one. So with the first round being linearized, the task of the MLP model becomes clear. That is, to find two to the n minus one dimensional cubes where n is as large as possible to attack more rounds. And find a balanced attacks where the ni and na are close and as small as possible. So this is our tasks for the MLP model. Before we introduce the MIP model, let's see a trivial example. Suppose a 128-bit key is loaded into the first two lanes of the initial state here, which means each lane is of 64 bits. And the cube variables are placed, in, uh, placed here, these two yellow lanes. And these two lanes are identical so that the cube variables will not diffuse to other places through theta. This also means that the cube variables are placed in the so-called cyclical mode. And we also suppose that auxiliary variables are set here just below the first key lane. If the auxiliary variables are identical to the, this key lane, the first key lane also won't diffuse to other lanes. As a result, only this, the second key lane, will diffuse through theta. And after theta, there are operations of pi and uh, rho. These two just change the positions of state base. And the next is the chi operation. We can see that the yellow lanes are not uh, yellow bits are not next to each other. So the first round will be linearized. And the cube variables are adjacent to the light blue bits. That is, only light blue key bits will multiply with the cube variables. This means after up to seven rounds, the cube sum will depend only on the 64 light light key base, light blue key base. So this is an example of the cube with parameters D and A and I being all 64. From this example, we can, we can derive the core of our model. That is, we need to model three things. First, we need to model the propagation of cube variables and the dimension D and the propagation of key bits through theta and the number of auxiliary variables. And last, the interaction of key bits and cube variables just before the chi and the count the number of key bits the cube sum will depend on. Mixed integer linear programming has been widely used in cryptanalysis since Mohar's it was pioneering work. An, ML, an MLP model problem is of the form with an objective function subjected to some linear inequalities. The variables are usually chosen from the integers. In our case, the objective is to minimize an i and an a under the constraint that the dimension is set to two to the m minus one, together with other inequalities. And we can find the variables to be binary. So the problems unsolved is to find the set of inequalities that can fulfill our goal. We take KJ Junior version one as an example to derive the inequalities for the model. Here, 
the light blue beige are constant, and the blue beige, these are key beige, and the white beige are the non-space. Note that both the cube variables and auxiliary variables should be chosen from the non-space. We let the letters A, B, C in lower case to stand for the state, and the activeness for this state is denoted by capital letters A, B, C. That is, if a bit contains a cube variable, this bit is active, and the activeness value is one. So first, first part, the propagation of cube variables and the dimension D. Since the constants and the key are fixed, so these bits are not active. So the values for the activeness are zero. While for the non-space, we don't know. We need to find an assignment. We also introduce two extra variables, the G, for the activeness of column sums, and the G to stands for the consumption of degrees of freedom. Let's see an example. If we place two variables v0, v1 here, the sum of this column will be v0 plus v1. So the sum is active. So the value for the gx for that column is 1. And there is no consumption of degrees of freedom. However, if we place v0 at both positions, the column sum will be inactive. So the value here should be 0. And one bit of degree of freedom is consumed. So the dimension can be calculated with these variables. That is the number of active bits in the state minus the number of degree, degrees of freedom consumed. That is here. And formally, the relation of the activeness of the state, the Activeness of the column sum and the degrees of freedom consumed can be described with three inequalities per column. And with the activeness of the input of theta and the activeness of the column sums, we can derive the activeness of the output of theta. Since its output bit is the sum of two column sums and the the bit itself. And from the activeness of B, we can calculate the activeness of, of C directly, since it's just a change the position of B bits. So the, the second part, the propagation of key bits. Here we introduce the W variables for the state. It, it indicates whether a bit contains key information or not. Of course, the constant contains no key information, so these values are zero. And the key bits, of course, contains key information. These are when. And for the non-space, we, we, we are not sure. We also introduce extra variables, capital X here, to denote whether the column sum contains key information or not. See an example here. Suppose these two key bits are k0 and k1. If we set an auxiliary variables here, the column sum will contain no key information. Then the value for x for that column is zero. However, if we don't set any auxiliary variables for this column, the column sum will contain key information. For this case, we only need one constraint. That is, all the non-space non and the column sum will sum to 1. That is, uh, one of them will be 1. And the number of the auxiliary variables can be calculated as the number of non-space being 1 in the white places. 
Lastly, the interaction of Kibis and the Cuba variables. Recall that uh, we use the capital ABC to denote the activeness of the state and W to denote the, whether the initial state contains key information or not. Accordingly, we also introduce Y and Z. With the Z and C, we can now collect the key bits that are adjacent to cube variables. So the model is done. We apply it to three Kachak-based uh, constructions for the KJ Junior version one, version two, we improved the previous attacks. Something interesting is that if the key size is reduced, one more round can be attacked for these two versions. And for the version senior v2, v2 we also improved the, the attacks. And for Zudu in the KJ mode, six rounds can be attacked. Compared with this version, with the senior, KJ senior, one round less can be attacked. Um, we feel that Zudu has a good resistance against uh, such type of attacks. We also have a seven round attacks against the largest version of KCHAC mic. To conclude, the MILP model does help to improve Cuba attack like a cryptanalysis with better results. And it is easier to find the cubes with the MILP model. And lastly, this work uh, does not threaten the security of any kid attack constructions. Thank you. Questions? Uh, okay. Um, so in the, in the beginning you mentioned this uh, conditional cube attack. How does your results compare to the conditional cube attack? Constructions uh, can check the constructions which are not listed here. Uh, conditional cube attacks performs better. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, maybe one more question out of curiosity. So um, you're taking advantage of both the theta and the S-box layer of, of the Ketchak constructions. Have you also looked at whether your attack can be expl um, expanded to, to cases where only one of the two functions is used? For example, ASCON, where we have the, a similar S-box but a different linear layer? You mean the same S-box but a different linear layer? Mm -hmm. uh, this attack mainly depend on the linear layer and some properties of the chi. So when we change the linear layer, uh, I think the results must be totally different. Okay, thank you. And let's thank, thank all speakers of the session again and enjoy the coffee break.